Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Tom Phillips. I'm actually bizarrely enough as well as with Property Industry Ireland. I'm also a town planner, and uh, I took over this role back in January. And before that, uh, we we had people more involved in the selling side in Aidan O'Hogan, and before that, we had Kieran McGowan, who had been the chairman of the IDA. And I was asked as a planner to take over a property industry uh, organisation. But my day-to-day -day job, I'm a planning consultant, but uh, I, I wear an, an also hat of this uh, issue of Property Industry Ireland. And we set up about five years ago a group of people around from about 13 different backgrounds to see if we could come up with solutions, positive solutions, uh, to solving the, the crisis of the property situation in Ireland at the time. And it wasn't the case that we're trying to outdo the Construction Industry Federation or the Irish Planning Institute or any other institute. We're just trying to see what it was that one could do to, to try and get a proper uh, planning system in, and property system in, in Ireland at the time. So we set up this organisation. Then two years ago, we decided it was getting too big for us, so we decided that we would uh, become a sectoral organisation within IBEC. And that's where we've been for the last two years. And one of the key things we've tried to do is to be the go-to organisation uh, for government on issues of property. And it's not competing with CIF, but it's trying to give a complementary issue where we look at all the different sectors. So these are around the 13 different compositions of PII from project managers to agents, planners, accountants, the main banks, uh, architects, and a number of contractors and developers as well. Quite a, a big membership, about 95 plus different companies, some of which could be PwC and very big companies. And we have four committees. We have a planning and development committee that I chaired and still chair, a funding initiatives committee where we've got the main banks in trying to look and see how can we fund development, the market supply and demand working out what are the log jams to development in the country and how can we unblock them, and then the construction and technical issues. So that's a bit of background to PII itself. But the key thing that's come down to the, since in the last five years is down to housing, the importance of delivering housing, because you can't have the IDA attracting in foreign direct investment if they then can't get housing for their workers, and that's a big issue. So the IDA is doing a fantastic job of getting in uh, employment into the country, but then we can't house the people. So what we're trying to do is come up with solutions, uh, and we're trying to do it in a non-confrontational way, to literally talk to local authorities, talk to government ministers, talk to the permanent government, and see different ways that we come up with solutions. So this is a famous, uh, for me, it's the, one of the, the slides I use most often to describe what I understand about the Irish planning system. And it was said by a Scottish architect in 2004. And he said, dealing with the Irish planning system, and no disrespect to John here, who's a very positive planner, but, but that dealing with the Irish planning system is like wading through treacle. So I'm putting the question, if that's what it's like, and you'll see the, um, you'll see the, 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 the uh, lion here is covered in hornets, which are wasps. Uh, who are attracted to the, to the thing. So that's a bit of a theme here. So you've got the, the tin of treacle. That's the system we're dealing with. So why can't we have a system that's more like a, a tin of Ron seal? That it says it does exactly what it says in the tin. So when we're trying to get people into the foreign direct investment into this country or the indigenous workers we have, why can't we say to people, uh, this is where you can live, and then say to people who deliver those houses, this is how long it's going to take you, and this is how long it's going to cost. Because a lot of developers that we would deal with say that when they're going into a bank looking for finance or going into a, um, that's senior debt, or going into a, an investment fund looking for finance to develop, the one bit that they can't control is the elasticity of the planning system. Everything else they can give an opinion on. If we sell X number of units, they'll create this amount. We've got to provide 10% social housing and all these different factors. But the one bit they can't factor in is the risk element because only 7% of all planning applications end up with the Planning Appeals Board. But if you're at 7%, it could add a year or it could add six months to your development uh, cycle, and then it could cost you a million, and it could cost you the profitability of, your, of your, your development. So that's the question. So what the ministers recently have inherited, and you have to remember we have a, a new government, and what they've inherited, uh, people who take over in the permanent gov, or the, 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 the 32nd doll, is what I would call is this, this, which I hope you can see what it is. It's actually a hornet's nest. And, uh, and basically this horn, sorry, I'll go back to one there. The, the, um, this this uh, hornet's actually are interesting that the, the, the work is done by the female. So there's a female inside who's very fertile and she's laying all the eggs. And all the hornets outside are females who are building it. So this hornet here is saying, why am I paying for Irish water? 
This one here is saying, I'm going to pay for Irish water, but why isn't she paying for Irish water? And she's saying something else, my house isn't big enough, or why am I providing 10% social housing? So the one thing about the planning system and the housing system in Ireland is that it's a hornet's nest. It's a very, very tricky thing to reconcile, and you'll never please all the people. So the key challenge that the government has taken on is to try and solve the, um, the housing crisis. And you'll see Simon Coveney has stuck his neck out uh, in the last few months, and he said that he has taken on board the housing situation. He could have taken health or he could have taken housing. He's made it his political ambition for the next two years to try his best to solve that hornet's nest. And the system we have at the moment, this is to provide a house. We've, uh, uh, in Property Industry Ireland, worked out there's about approximately 15 different agencies are involved in the provision of a house. So if you take one of them alone, the local authority here, the local authority, that means you might have to, to talk to the planner in the local authority, but it also means you've got to deal with the uh, disabled access if you're doing multiple houses, you might be dealing with the fire officer, etc. So there's a multitude of people within one of those agencies, of those 15 agencies, in one of them alone, you have a multitude of people to deal with. And that's very, very tricky uh, in the system. So then the uh, Minister has also taken over what was the Department of the Environment. It's now the Depar Department of Housing, uh, Planning and Local Government. And we were estimated there's 76 different functions in that, uh, that department. So this minister has had to hit the ground running in what was the old Department of the Environment, 67, or sorry, 76 different functions, including dog control, public art, uh, provision of cemeteries, provision of housing, etc. So it's a huge, huge undertaking to be taken in a short space of time. And when we complain about the government all the time, we have to remember that these three people were only appointed as, as ministers uh, on the 6th of May this year. So you've got uh, Simon Coveney, who's the new Minister for Housing and Planning and Local Government. The first time we have a, a, a government level, cabinet level minister. We've got Pascal Donoghue, who's the, the Minister for uh, PER, for Public Expenditure and Reform. And then Damien English, uh, the more junior minister who uh, was involved with this presentation today. So we've got those three people. So the ones on the right and the left working together, and the one in the middle working with uh, Simon Coveney yesterday in the introduction of this new uh, local uh, infrastructure fund, which is going to be very, very important. So in terms of the, pri the priorities for the government, in PII, we wrote bef um, a number of things we felt needed to be done uh, in housing. And the first of those is the need for a supply of quality, affordable housing. Now, the, the big issue we have is that we have a massive demand, and the demand is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but the supply is being, is being restricted. And that's a massive issue that we face, and it's a societal issue. It's not just an issue for developers trying to get back into making lots of money again. It's actually an issue for Ireland as an economy and as a society. And if you want to look at it at its most extreme version, you've got the number of people who are living in hotel accommodation who should be living in houses. Like, it's not beyond uh, the ability of, of people working collaboratively in this country to solve this problem. And that's what the minister has set out to do, is to stop this silo thinking, or institutes versus institutes, or planners giving out about architects, architects giving out about planners. It's to get everybody working to, to get a common goal, which is to provide uh, the quality, uh, affordable housing. The second one is to make sure that the infrastructure is there to make it happen. Because you'll have situations in the country where people are trying to develop houses but can't actually get permission because the infrastructure is not in place. So you might have a situation that you've got a local area plan is there to, to facilitate development, but the local authority is trying to work with you, but they can't give you permission because a wastewater treatment plant in the area that they need to, su to support this housing can't be provided. And it can't be provided because they haven't got the funding, and they haven't got the funding because Irish Water haven't got the funding, and Irish Water haven't got the funding because people in general don't want to pay for Irish water. So there's all these issues that we have to reconcile, and, but we have a crisis. So we have to literally say we have to look at things differently because we can't continue as we've been doing for years because we won't get uh, the development we need. And the other third thing is the root and branch uh, issue about the planning system, because the planning system is a very simple, easy, soft target. So what we need to do, and I'm saying when we, I'm talking about the private and public sector planners, working together with others to work out how can we collectively sort this out. And I saw this at its most extreme a few months ago when I came out and supported the minister saying that we should have, sm we should not, we should have smaller apartment sizes, but that we should stick to the ones that he came out with in 2007. And a lot of my fellow planners were aghast that a planner should actually say that's a good 
good thing. I thought it was, it was a good thing, because anything that makes housing viable, in my opinion, is very, very important, as long as it's quality housing. And you, this thing about arguing over whether an apartment is 45 square metres or 44 or 46 is the wrong argument. It's about quality of apartments. And we can see internationally there's plenty of quality apartments that don't meet Irish standards in, quant in, qu in quantity standards, but in quality they do. And we should, look at, we should literally look at the planning system and see, is it really the, the blockage that people say that it is? So in doing this, we came up with some documents in PAI, and we wrote to various government departments before, or government agencies before the election and all the local parties, and we said that they needed to have a 100-day strategy to really hit the ground running, because what you do in 2016 in a housing strategy delivers houses in 2018. You can't just click your fingers and make it happen overnight. So it's a lead-in time to, to get this uh, situation right. So what we should have done in 2014 would have solved 2016. Not what we do uh, today. Is it will help, but really we have to look at the longer term. And we needed also some fast track planning, because if planning is the problem, then we need to look at ways of making it happen quicker, not by reducing standards, but by giving people certainty. Because if you have a planning appeal, if you go to Dublin City Council and apply for planning commission, you know that you will get a decision within eight weeks, because that's in legislation. But if you're one of the 7% that ends up in Ambor Panola, Ambor Panola under the legislation has got a statutory objective to determine it within 18 weeks, but they're not obliged to do it in 18 weeks. So you could have a situation that you actually don't know. It might take 18 weeks, it may take 21 weeks, 25, 35, it may take forever. And that's, a, that's the elasticity that it causes problems. So we need to look at a system of legislation that we can give certainty, that someone mightn't like the decision, but at least they know they'll get in a certain amount of time. And it's not a dumbing down of standards, it's just a matter of attaching a clock and saying that if you apply for permission, that you will or you will not get it in a period of time. And then look at the tax base, because the, uh, the very good study done recently by the Society of Chartered Surveyors, but they said that the cost of building an, ap an apartment or a house is actually 45% of the cost of, prov of providing it. The other 55% is in taxation and in other costs. So the build cost is 45% of the cost of providing. And we need to look at that 55% and also look at the 45% and see where we can make better, better reductions. So the two documents we did, as I said, were the housing strategy and the housing manifesto. And we, when the government was announced, we wrote the white document which said, what, this is what we think they should do in the first 100 days. And have a whole of government approach, not have Fianna Fáil versus Fine Gael versus Labour versus the Greens, but to look collectively. And in fairness to the government, they are looking at this, as, a, as, as John said, this document which will come out on Friday, and try and inform the debate, influence it, and make things happen, rather than just talk about it. And one of the things that Simon Coveney has said is he doesn't want a lot of talkers, he wants a lot of doers. He wants people who can actually come up with ideas and actually implement them. So looking at the way we look at it, look at the issue, look at what we recommend, and then say how Ireland benefits. And then you can sell it to politicians much better if you can show what is the, is the benefit. And try and get them to stop thinking about developers and contractors as the root of all evil, or the banks, and say, right, we, we, we are where we are, let's move forward and work collectively. And try and present a cross-sectoral property solution to this thing. And say, look at it from all aspects, not just look at it from the, the eyes of an architect or the eyes of a planner, but look at it across everybody's views. So in terms of the issues, we come up with four or five key themes. The first has been delivered. We have now a minister at cabinet level of housing planning and local government. We're also looking to get housing through and looking at social housing in a sustainable way because Cluid, a uh, presentation I saw recently by Cluid, the housing agency said that approximately between a quarter and a third of the Irish population cannot afford to live in market housing. In other words, a third, a quarter to a third of the Irish populace cannot afford to live in private accommodation. So we've got to deal with it and developers have got to deal with it and they've got to embrace it. They can't run from it anymore because the legislation has changed. They've got to embrace social housing and make sure that people who live in social housing, that their house is no different than the person who's paid for it and that we literally look after those people and, and do a proper uh, society approach to it and make housing affordable as well because there's one thing having social housing which is at a certain cost base but there's also affordable housing, making housing affordable and let's look at different ways that we can make housing affordable. So in terms of funding of infrastructure, we looked around six different issues from completing our infrastructure network. We worked out there's about 12.5 billion euro required for, to, to get Ireland's uh, infrastructure required, whether it be water or roads or whatever. But we need to start looking how we can best get bang for our buck and not to have a situation where whoever asks first gets the money, but, whoever, to, but to work out what's the priority of infrastructure we need in the country. That's hugely important. To look also, not just look at Dublin-centric, but to look at the rural villages like 
Boyle County Roscommon? Why isn't that doing well? Why is Westport doing well? And why, isn't, why is Boyle County Roscommon not doing well? And look at those centres and see what's needed in those towns which have the housing stock but don't have industry. And try and, try and see how we can regenerate all those towns in particular. Look at other things from, is it a policy? Do we need to have directly elected mayors who are, who are going to be there for a certain amount of time? Do we need four different uh, authorities in Dublin, between Fingal, Dunleary, South Dublin and Dublin City? Do we not need, like if London can have one mayor for a huge populace of over 7 million, can we not have one mayor for four authorities in Dublin? And look and see how, what we can do in terms of improvements to infrastructure. So the yesterday's announcement was three things we could say about it. 200 million was announced uh, by Ministers Donoghue and Coveney uh, for a local infrastructure fund, uh, which is very, very important, and that will be for public off-site infrastructure. So if you've got a situation where development can't occur because you've got a wastewater treatment plant that needs to be upgraded, they're saying, we're going to give the, the ability to local authorities to borrow the money on a best case scenario, not a first up best dressed scenario, but a best case scenario. So if a local authority can come to the Department of Housing Planning and, and Local Government and Finance and say to Finance, we have identified in our authority that if we upgrade the XYZ water treatment plant, that we think that we can free up 100 houses to be applied for next month by a developer X and Y and make it happen. And that's hugely important. So the local authorities will borrow the money and have a means of getting the money back, but that's kind of a multiplier effect. That's worked very well in the UK, where they look and see what they can do to get money uh, to, to, to multiply as quickly as possible. And then to look at the reforming planning, to plan for our future population. And one of the issues that IBEC has said is that why are we looking at a population? Uh, we have 4.58 million people in the 2011 census. And they're saying, and they've got Northern Ireland has got a one point something million. So we've got like six point something million people living on the island. And they're saying we shouldn't be looking at a six point million population. We should be looking at an island for 10 million people. And then plan for that between the north and the south. To plan what would Ireland look like if we had 10 million people. And that's not a bizarre scenario because if you look at the census figures around the time of, the, of this famine, we were 8.5 8 million people. So it's not a huge, huge uh, issue. But it is in terms of the way our dem demographics and is quite right that our population size is continuing to grow and our house sizes, household sizes are continuing to shrink. So we've got these two uh, challenges, more people and, and smaller houses. So we need, so the do-nothing scenario is not, is not viable. We must do something because we're, if we just keep the way we're going, the same number of people, the people growing incrementally will have a much greater need for housing because the, the household sizes are getting smaller. So we need to plan what kind of infrastructure do we need in the country for 10 million people, not just 4.58 or 4.6, but what do we need for a population of 10 million people? And speed up the delivery of social housing and, and look at these issues and also say we're in a crisis. So we have to really look at different ways of doing it. And we've also, you can see in the doll that politicians who would have spent their lives fighting like a tennis match between each other are now looking at each other and saying, what can we do? Collectively. And I'd say equally, it's not a matter of planners criticising architects and architects, architects criticising planners. Let's stop criticising each other and work. And that's what we're trying to do in Property Industry Ireland, is to bring together all the people and come up with positive solutions as opposed to negativity the whole time. And attach a countdown clock and say, listen, listen the minister has said himself the other day that he thinks this doll is going to last for two years. So he has set himself up a countdown clock. This clock is going to run out, not in 30 seconds, but in two years. And we need to solve this problem. And one of the issues we've been saying in the Property Industry Ireland to the Minister, and he's been saying back uh, as a possible solution, is a fast-track system of where people might apply directly to the Planning Appeals Board for housing over a certain size. He said 250, we're saying why not 80, to make the planning system that you don't, that you de-risk it, and say that we've got planners from local authorities seconded, whether it's into Empor Panola or into some other body, to make planning happen in 20 weeks. What, and, and have every other form of development can, can take a back seat for slightly until we get the housing sorted out. So let's prioritise any schemes of scale. So whether it's 80 or 100 or 250, that literally that somebody applies for planning commission and they know that they will either get a grant or a refusal in 20 weeks, that it won't be a situation that they'd be wondering will be other loads of questions. So the, it's incumbent on the applicant, they know they're going to get a one bite at it, so they must, it's going to be a, a two or three year period, we're saying to the minister, and bring it in, look at that legislation for that period of time. That's not open-ended and saying we've got two years windows guys to sort this out and get people to get on with it and if you don't use it then if you get your permission you can't just flip the site you must demonstrate before you apply that you've got the financial backing to deliver and that to deliver uh, vast numbers of housing very quickly so in terms of the benefits to Ireland we've got the um, coordinated approach to housing policy we've got better uh, looks at the 
viability issue, cheaper finance, because if developers or banks can see that it can be done cheaply or it can be done with some degree of certainty, they can reduce rates and get back to this tin of the Ron seal, that it's a predictable supply of housing. So we're not saying we need to build X number of houses per year. We're saying we want to build those number of houses per year, but we know we can do it because we've actually planned for it. We're not just waiting reactively. We've been proactive in it. So in terms of the three ministers to date, I think they've hit the ground running. They've only been there since the 6th of May. I'm not like a, here to support the ministers, but I'm saying in fairness to these three guys, they seem to have hit the ground running. And what we're trying to do, if they do it properly, in this first, they've only been there since the 6th of May. We're now on the, what, the 15th of June. So in the first 100 days, if they can come up with a good strategy that we can give some predictability, that's going to help those people. And you look at this situation about the tin of Ron sale, that we at the moment, and I was actually, I was actually interviewed in the Pat Kenny show yesterday, and someone rang in and said, some bloody developer going on about more money for developers. It's not. We're paying 50 million euro a year to keep people in hotels in emergency accommodation. Imagine what that 50 million could do if that could help a water treatment plant or something else that we can build houses that people can have a permanent solution, not a temporary uh, solution. So what I'm trying to say is, what can we do to get a tin of Ron seal and not a tin of treacle? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.